here tonight, and Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. God, for every prayer request for the sick and the lost and Lord, the ones that just need help, Lord, you heard every one of them, and God, we just pray in Jesus' name that you'd touch them. God, uh, we're just gathered here in your name needing, needing some help tonight. Lord, I pray for the ones that ain't here. God, that need help, that are beat down tonight, or Lord, just uh, maybe just fell back into something they shouldn't have. Lord, I pray for them tonight. Lord, you'd help them be merciful. God, help us all to do better and want to do better. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll just look at a few verses till I get tired and ready to go home, and we'll go home. Amen. Does that sound okay? Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. How many of you have read Romans chapter number 6? You ought, you ought to read that and read that and read that, because really... Six and seven, we should go through all that a bunch of times before we ever get here. Listen, there's, there is therefore now no, say no, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation. To them that are in Christ Jesus. Anybody ever felt condemned? You ever felt vacant? You ever felt like that just God's not there, Doug? Maybe like Romans chapter number 7 we talked about Sunday. Maybe that you just feel like you just can't do it. Maybe you feel like that you've just sinned. Or maybe you just know, Randall, you're going to sin again the same way that you have. And you just feel a vacant feeling. You feel condemned. You feel like you're pushed down or the finger's always pointing at you or you have no self-worth in the Lord and maybe the devil's got you pushed down, but maybe it's just your flesh or if, maybe it's your self-confidence in the Lord. i tell you what, you take a Christian or somebody, David, and take their self-confidence away. You take a young person and take their confidence in their self, not pride, but self-confidence, knowing that you're able to do something. Alan, if you strip somebody of that, they're condemned right off the bat. Anybody ever felt that way? You ever messed up, Doug, and, and just feel like you're going to do it again, just feel condemned? The Bible said there's no condemnation. No condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. But then here's the stipulation to, the, to it. You walk not after the flesh, but after... The Spirit. Walk, that means to live. It's easy to walk after the flesh because every day it's with me. Doug, it's easy for me to be opinionated. It's easy for me to be proud. It's easy for me to get bitter. It's easy for me to be judgmental. It's easy for me to be self-righteous. But every time I do that, I get so condemned in myself, in the flesh, because I feel so bad for it, because when I'm feeling that way, I'm useless to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Anybody else ever been there? This is for somebody. But I want you to listen to this. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Spirit of life. When we leave here on Sunday mornings and the choirs, one of them services like we hadn't had in a little while, where, Kevin, the choirs, just the banks, it's just running out of them. And Doug, everybody's coming to the altar and everybody's filled up with the Spirit. And you leave here and all of a sudden you feel alive like you hadn't been in a while. Cindy, you get in the car and you say, today is exactly what I needed. Today is exactly what I've been looking for, but you, probably you won't make it home until something happens or, or you get a phone call or, or something happens, Alan, and uh, something frustrates you or makes you mad or the next day at work, Mondays are my worst days. Mondays. But that, that's not walking in the Spirit. That's not living in the Spirit. That's, that's a minute 
of just feeling good about it. That's your first day of your new diet, Doug, when you drink a full gallon of water, you eat a salad from Zaxby's and don't put no dressing on it, and you come home and you say, yes, today I have a new lease on life. Today I feel good. I'm walking in the Spirit and in the power. I feel life like I hadn't felt it in a long time. But then the next day, that spirit of death comes over you and you drown it in whatever you have for lunch. To walk in the Spirit and to walk in the Spirit of life is not a feeling. It's not a temporary thing. It's not something that you just do to, to feel better. It's not a service. But it's an absolute lifestyle. It's something that you have to determine in your heart. That's what I tried to preach uh, Sunday, Alan. Is shall we still continue in sin that grace may abound? And Paul does say over and over, O wretched man that I am. And he says that he can't hardly do it. But you can do it. But you have to determine that it's your lifestyle to walk in the Spirit. Amen. Is that easy? No, that ain't easy. But listen, you're free from sin and death. Lord, help us tonight. For what the law could not do, it shows you that you're a sinner, in that it is weak through the flesh. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh by the cross. By looking at what Jesus done on the cross and the shed blood of the cross, we can overcome sin and the flesh. That in righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now listen to this. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Let me read that again. To be carnally minded or fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Does that mean that everything you talk about, Denise, all the time with Doug is the Bible? Does that mean that everything that y'all talk about at the dinner table is church or God or that's all that you talk about? I know a fellow that got saved, Doug, and when he... He got, I talked to him on the phone one day and he talked about the Lord for two hours and it was good. And the next time I talked to him, he talked about the Lord for two hours. And then he started talking about things that he quit. Then he started talking about things that he gave up. Then he started talking about things that other people should quit. Then he started think, talking about things that other people should give up. And that's as carnally minded as the people that are doing the things wrong. Listen to me. Because if that, that's not living in the Spirit either. Because trying to be so spiritual that you try to be spiritual all the time or trying to be so spiritually minded, Alan, that you try to be spiritually minded. You can't go in the grocery store and stand at the counter and quote the Bible to the girl that's checking you out all the time. You can't look down on people and condemn them because you have gave something up. You cannot walk in the Spirit like that either. That is death to you and whoever you're around. This guy meant well. He, he, I mean, he was on track. He gave up some things. But whenever you start going in the Spirit and you start condemning people, we do more damage than we did when we were lost. And we're just as carnally minded. But he said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And a lot of times that means just to be really quiet. Amen? We were talking on the way here, and Lily was talking about some girls on her ball team. And they started talking about, what do you think about this person? And Lily said she just listened. Then they said, I don't know, what do you think about this person? And I said, Lily, I said, you didn't get in that, did you? Mm -mm, no. I said, well, you better not. Because them same people that say, what do you think about this person will tell that person, what do you think about this person? And all of a sudden they'll say, this person said they think this about you. And there's no life or peace in that. And that's carnally minded too. So for us that think that we're doing good 
And, and because we don't get drunk on Friday night, because, Kevin, we didn't get drunk on Saturday night, because you hadn't uh, done any of the major sins. Amen? So we got lists of major sins, right, brother? We got lists of major sins. As long as I don't do this, then I'm all right. But we're just as carnally minded doing those small things and there's no life or peace in it as we are doing the big list things. Amen. I'll be done in just a few minutes. Listen to this. Because the carnal mind is enmity or an attack or a fight against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in their flesh cannot please God. This is not for the lost person, Doug. This is for you. So when you get in the flesh, and us adults join in our adult conversations, when me and David Houck begin to talk and begin to get carried away until we say how we really feel, that's enmity or attack against God. Because how do I feel when Gra if Gracie and Lily start talking bad about one another? That hurt my feelings. If Gracie came to me and said, Dad, I just can't hardly stand Lil. That, that hurt me. How does God feel, Lita, whenever... His people, and He knows every thought that goes through our minds. How does He feel when we carnally attack one another? When we verbally talk down to one another, Alan, or talk about one another? Or go ahead and just start a little trouble? Amen. Now I know why the Lord pushed me through traffic in Raleigh and uh, Kelly going 87 miles an hour. Amen. Listen to this. I'll be done here in just a minute. I, I don't know about you, but I want to please God, don't you? I want God to be pleased. Every little girl on that ball team that has a daddy or got a mama there, they, whenever they do something, they walk out and they look to see if he's watching. You know what they're looking for? That right there. We ought to be like that. But ye are not of the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit. Listen. Let me start all over right here. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ. He is none of His. But listen to this. And if Christ be in you. The body is dead because of sin. The, the spirit is life because of righteousness. In other words, my spirit is not subject to that sin nature all the time, but this body is. But I don't have to be subject to it. You don't have to be subject to it. I don't have to... My, my biggest problem is probably my temper. That's probably, I, I confess, that's probably my biggest problem. Doug, I can get mad and say whatever's on my mind. And if I do say what's on my mind, I'll go ahead and empty out whatever else has been there for a while. Amen. And then when I do that, it embarrasses me. So you know what I do when I get embarrassed? I go ahead and say something else. Then you know what you've done? You've made a mess. You've hurt your own feelings. But when I can control that, and sometimes I can, and I hold it, Doug, and I let it go, I find out what I wanted to air it out about wasn't anything anyway. And the, the inner man, the spirit man, the spiritual man, he's never going to be abusive. He's never going to be mean. He's never going to jump to conclusions. He's never going to tell you how the flesh man feels because he does not feel that way. That's good preaching. He doesn't feel like the flesh man. He's different. 
But when I do let the flesh man do that, it's not long till I'm having to apologize. I'm having to pray. I'm having to seek in the Scripture. That's the beauty of this, though. That's the beauty of grace and mercy. That's the beauty of being saved in the cross. God knew that I was going to mess up when He saved me. He didn't save me because I was a sinner and He could make me perfect. He did make all things new, Alan, but He knew that I would battle with this all of my life. All of my life. And to walk in the Spirit is so much better. The Spirit, Doug, will never cause you any problems. And He'll get you out of a lot of problems. So tonight, and I could go on, but I'm done, I'm wore out. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you don't get nothing else out of this, if you can let God control your mind and control your tongue, and when you get the urge to say whatever, whatever you want to say, who has trouble with their tongue ever? Anybody in here ever had a temper problem? Wow. I would say it's pretty common. Because we're just people. We're just people. But we're saved people. You're not going to be perfect. But if the, the devil or your flesh can condemn you and push you down and make you feel like, Alan, you ain't worth it, you'll quit. These pews, a lot of them are empty tonight from people that's sitting at home feeling condemned. Feeling bad for something that the rest of us are just as guilty of. Amen. Same thing. There's now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. God, you know exactly who this was for. Everything that was said. God, I pray for you. Just bring glory to your name and help our church, help our people, help me to do better. Lord, we just want to do better. Lord, move in our church, help the ones, God, that ain't here not to be condemned, but Lord, may be convicted, God, and want to come and do their part. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You need to come pray tonight, come pray. The altar's open.
stuff on it. Never got to get to one word of it, Kevin. Not one word of what I'd studied. But I tried to give you what the Lord gave me. I know it was scattered. But I'm sure something will help you. The word will never come back void. Fellowship, love on one another, you'll be at liberty to go. <laughs> 